it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to week three of our fall crochet along. We are working on the Forest Splendor shawl. This is a lacy shawl and easy stitches. And just to recap what we've done so far, in week one, we talked a little bit about the supplies needed. So we're using a six millimeter J crochet hook. And then we're using a variety of yarn that is a four or a medium on the yarn weight scale. I've chosen Red Heart Super Saver in the Real Teal and Red Heart Super Saver in Gray Heather and Red Heart Soft in Guacamole. So last week, uh, for week two, we learned how to work this stitch, this lacy stitch of our shawl. It's five rows, but our repeat is rows two through five. So when we kind of uh, broke away last week, uh, I said that we this week we would learn how to transition from one color to the next, or if you're not doing a striped shawl, if you want to just do a solid shawl, eventually you'll run out of yarn and want to rejoin a new ball of yarn. So we're going to learn how to do either one of those two things. Now I have uh, worked the teal section and then I worked a gray section and then the green section and I, th I think last week I had said I'm going to get up to this point and then we'll do this. However, I really wanted to work a little bit farther just to show you how these colors are working together and if you're choosing different colors how the how the stitches kind of transition from one to the other. They kind of like hook on to each one of those chain two spaces and it looks very pretty. It's a nice transition. Also, I wanted to mention that I talked about a little bit last week is that I have the most of this teal yarn. Now, depending on what yarn you're using and colors and things like that, I'm going to do three stitch repeats of the teal, two stitch repeats of the gray heather, and two stitch repeats of the green. Now, what I mean by that is to complete your shawl, uh, and if you didn't see week two, that's where we explain how to do this particular stitch sequence. But to complete your shawl, you'll want to work rows two through five over and over and over until your shawl is as tall as you would like it to be. We established width through our starting chain last week. But uh, when I say repeats, I'm saying I did rows two through five three times in the teal. I did it twice in the gray, and I did it twice in the green. So if you want to replicate this exactly, you know, that's uh, that information. But you can even do one row of each color. You can change it up a little bit too. And that's what really makes the cow so exciting is to see how everybody kind of changes it up a little bit with their colors, with their striping. Some of you may opt for a solid shawl as well. So let's jump into our tutorial for today. It's going to be short and sweet. We're just kind of finishing up the shawl. So again, I did three colors because I really wanted to show you how those colors are starting to play out. And then I'm going to continue working on my shawl as well. So I have for my green section. I'm ready to switch colors in just a minute back to the teal because we went teal, gray, green, teal, gray, green, and so forth. So I'm ready to switch back to the teal again. So I'm just going to work my very last stitch. And then what we're going to do is grab our scissors. So for today's tutorial, you want your scissors and your tapestry needle. And you can just cut the yarn. Now, as a side note, I prefer to cut my yarn and just tie the new yarn right on. However, there are lots and lots of ways to join on a new ball of yarn. This is just the way I love to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to fasten off with the old color, grab the new color, which is this teal. And I think I mentioned this before, but I really love this particular color sequence because it looks very fall and wintry to me, so it'll kind of carry us into both seasons. Okay, so what we're going to do is that last stitch that you worked, reinsert the hook back into that last stitch, bring the new yarn through, and just tie it right on. Okay, again, if you have a way of doing this that you prefer, definitely feel free to do that. This is, at the end of the day, this is your shawl, and you make up the rules for your shawl. <laughs> so, we have the yarn tied on. Now we're just going to reinsert the hook back into that last stitch, bring up a loop, and now we're ready to continue. So again, we're working rows two through five for the rest of the shawl, no matter what color you're doing. And I'm just, I just happen to be changing the colors after two repeats for these two colors and after three for these, just to keep it simple so I know where to switch colors. 
So what we're gonna do, you can just do your chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. And this is actually what I consider to be the front side of the work, the double crochets are facing forward. And then we're just going to work our rows and work our stitches. So you can just continue on with your shawl and make it go as long as you would like it to be. Now, let me just remove my hook for a moment because I wanna show you one more thing before we finish up here, and that is our ends. Now grab your tapestry needle, and I wanted to just show you something. You can weave in your ends down here. Now some of you may have opted to kind of weave them, as, weave them in as you go along, but you'll have that inevitable first end where you began. So whenever you're weaving in ends, and I'm just gonna go ahead and thread my tapestry needle, make sure you weave the correct color into itself. So I have a teal end here. Just try and stay in the teal area or whatever color you're using. So what we're gonna do is just go in. Now with the lace, lacy stitches, see how I have a lot of chains and it's very open along the top here. I'm gonna opt to take my needle down a little bit and go into these heavier, more solid areas and it'll blend in a little bit more nicely if you do that. So take the needle in one direction, come back in the other direction And then you can grab your scissors, and if you give it a little tug before you trim, it'll kind of retract back in there and disappear, okay? So that's how you weave in the ends. And for those of you who are interested in blocking your shawl, now we used acrylic yarn for this shawl. There is a method that you can use using an iron and kind of applying uh, steam to the piece if you're using acrylic yarn, and that will help to open it up just a little bit and kind of straighten it up if you need it. Um, now the important thing with acrylic yarn is to never ever ever let your iron touch your project because acrylic yarn is essentially plastic and it will melt the yarn and ruin your project and all this hard uh, stitchery that you put into it. So um, I will share that video if you're interested in blocking your shawl. If not, you can leave it as is and oftentimes I will just leave my projects as is. If you're using natural fibers like wool or alpaca, etc., you can uh, do a heavier blocking. You can wet block it if you like. You can also steam block natural fibers, but you can actually soak the piece and pin it back and you can really get a lot more openness if you're into that. If not, you can just leave it as is. So that is the rest of our shawl tutorial. So what we're gonna do to complete our shawl is to just keep working rows two through five over and over and over, switching colors and balls of yarn as needed. And sometimes what I like to do when I have a lot of ends is to weave a few in every, every couple of rows or sections I do. I maybe just weave the ends in as I go in that regard too. So the next thing we're going to be doing is the uh, Maker Gallery. So I'm gonna give us a few weeks to work on this project. I know a lot of you um, ask me for more time when we have the crochet alongs. The very first one I think we did just one week after and it wasn't enough time. So we're gonna wait a few more weeks and share the Maker Gallery. I will announce that in my weekly updates and I will also announce it on social media so we'll all be in the same loop to share our photos. So, uh, Enjoy making your shawl and having a beautiful piece to wear into fall and all the way into winter. And I can't wait to see all of your shawls. I know some of you have been sharing photos already and they're fabulous. So enjoy, relax. This is a nice, um, easygoing project with some nice stitches. And if you haven't joined our Ravelry group, be sure and hop over and join the Ravelry group. There's a lot of sharing going on. You can ask questions, you can help others, you can kind of show off your work, share your colors. I know some people like to um, ask people's opinions. Like, what do you think about these two colors together and things like that? So it's a wonderful community and a very positive environment. So hop on over to the Cal group if you haven't joined it. I'll provide the link down below for that. And that's a wonderful place to um, share your work and connect with the other makers of the Cal as well. So that is the conclusion of our week three. Have fun stitching. If you have any comments, hop over to the Ravelry group or share below. And I will see you for the Maker Gallery. Bye, everyone. Bye.